Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of my tutorial series about the Hue hexadecimal editor and how to work with binary files. I'm talking about the editor from the website hue.ru. No previous knowledge of this editor is assumed. All video notes and files I will also post on my website yuris.info, so make sure to use it as well. In this task-based video, we will learn how to open a file, find a string in it, do some edits, save the result, find an assembly instruction and finally change it. All this I will be doing with the help of a simple program I wrote, which when run asks for a correct serial number from the user, compares it with the serial stored in the program itself and gives the answer if it was correct or not. Our task will be to find this checking function and fix it so it accepts any serial as correct. Here is our example program written in C. The source code is also available on the uris.info. Here is the stored correct serial and here is the function that checks the serial for correctness. If the serial is correct, this message is printed. If not, then this one. Now let's open the example program with the editor. But before that, just one tweak of the configuration file hue8.ini, namely the color scheme. The default color scheme has light blue background that really hurts your eyes, so we will change it to the black background. For this, let's open the configuration file and scroll down to the color section. Here I changed just main color value from the default 1B to 07. By the way, the color values you see here are for Windows console. So if you want something else, use this table to pick the color. Now we can start the editor opening my example file called serial1.exe. By default, the file is open in the text mode, where the editor sees everything as printable characters. Not very useful for a binary file, but we will change it later. You interact with the editor using keyboard shortcuts. The two most important for a beginner are F1 for help and escape to exit any current mode or window. The help is context aware, so you get different help topics in different windows. The good thing about the escape key is that you exit any window not saving any changes made so far, so if you've done some unwanted changes, you can press few times escape and exit the editor discarding the changes. You change into different modes and windows by using the functional keys F1 to F12. The available at any given moment function keys are highlighted at the bottom toolbar. We've seen F1 so far, now let's press F4 to change the file editing mode. There are three all-in-all -all modes available, the text, the hexadecimal and the decode. The decode means disassembled machine instruction. Using arrow keys, I can pick any mode, then hit enter to enable it. Right now we are in the hex mode of the editor. By using control page down, control page up, you move inside the file. We can press control and home keys to get to the top of the file and control and end combination to get to the bottom. Now let's press F4 and switch to the decode mode to see assembly instructions of the file. The other way, and used by everyone actually, to switch between modes is to just hit enter to get to the next mode. Here I get to the text mode, press enter again and switch to the hex mode and enter again to get to the decode mode. Now let's enter the edit mode by pressing F3. As you can see the cursor has changed, also the bottom toolbar shows, shows now different active functional keys. You edit things by typing new values, so let's change for example this 41 upcode to 51. The mnemonic changes as well from the increment to the push instruction. Now if I hit F3 key, it undoes the previous change and the value is back to 41. And as I mentioned, if you want to discard all changes, not some specific ones, 
just hit escape key few times like I do now and the changes are discarded completely. Now the upper toolbar. First we can see here the name of the open file. Next we see the direction of the search. The down arrow means the active search now is from top to the bottom and to change the direction we would use Alt F7. But now let's run our example software. It asks for the serial, I will enter some garbage and I get the failure message that serial was wrong. Great, now we have some specific string to work with inside the binary. But in many cases you don't have that, that much feedback from a program and then our option is to look at all existing strings inside the binary to maybe shed some additional light. To do so I press Alt F6 and it opens a new window with all possible strings inside the binary. As you can see here the minimum number of characters for a string is by default 4 characters which is too small therefore it found us 222 strings and to fix this we can use plus and minus keyboard keys to increase or decrease this minimum. Let's make it 9 characters and now it is much better. We can see the prompt to enter the serial. If we keep on looking we see this interesting string saying great you have the correct serial. Looks like a success to me. Now while this string is still highlighted I press enter and get to the place in the file where this string is located. I press enter again to switch to decode mode. The idea here is to find the function or piece of code that uses this string, success string, up to the code that makes the decision whether the user enters the correct serial or not. For this he has F6 key once the cursor is under some data of interest. F6 finds us cross references of the given asset inside the binary. In IDA you have the X shortcut exactly for this. So let's press F6 and here we see the success string being pushed on the stack for printf function to be used later. I press F6 again to get to the code that calls this printing function and here is a JZ conditional jump if zero upcut. This means that somewhere and actually one line above there goes comparison operation. Something actually the entered serial and the one stored inside the binary is being compared and if values equal go to the success printing code as the offset that ends in F7. Our next action will be to change this conditional jump if strings match to unconditional jump. So no matter what the user enters always go to the success code. And for this I press F3 for editing then F2 to enter common sub editing mode. And here I'm going to change conditional jump if zero to unconditional short jump to the same destination. I hit enter for the change to take effect and F9 to save the changes to the disk. After this change the example program should not complain about the wrong serial no, no matter what I enter. Let's see if it is so. I enter some junk here and voila we have successfully circumvented the dummy protection of the file. Mission accomplished. Now before we part let me quickly show you a few additional useful editor options this time without any specific task in mind. First searching for a string. If you know the exact or approximate string we want to search for there is F7 key to do just that. We can search an ASCII tree or any binary values in hex that is a binary string. Let's search for the word wrong. The search is by the way case insensitive. Here we have it. Now if I wanted to keep on searching I would press Ctrl and enter. Let's do it now. As you can see no more is found. Let me show now importance of the search direction. If I move the cursor down a few lines and search again for the same string I uh, found previously, now I found nothing. But if I reverse the direction with the Alt F7 and search again, the string is found.
Let's talk a bit about the addressing in the editor. As you can see here, the current position of the cursor is always shown in the top toolbar. And by default, Hue calculates offsets using the image base, which is in most cases, if we talk about PE file format in Windows, equals to 4, 5 times 0 hexadecimal. The alternative is to switch to the absolute offsets from the top of the file as saved on disk. To do so, we press Alt F1 and the addresses change. To move inside the file to the exact location, we use F5, then enter the address to jump to. You do it like that. Of course, we can move using relative jumps. Let's move 5 bytes down from the current position. For this, I will enter F5, then plus 5. To move up 5 bytes, I enter minus 5 and hit enter. Don't forget that relative moves are in the hexadecimal as well. Next, getting some information about the file size. For this, we use Control alt We can see here size of the file in hex decimal bytes and kilobytes. To open another file, press F9 to get to the file explorer, then navigate using arrow keys and press enter to choose or escape to exit. To select block of bytes, we use shift A to start the selection, then move with arrows to actually select and finally press shift and 8 to finish the selection. Now, if I use F2, I can save the selected block to another file or even append it to the currently open one. The last feature I mentioned shortly in this video is search and replace. We use it by pressing Ctrl F3. Very useful and we will return to it in the future for sure. But now that sums up what I meant to share with you today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.